It's no surprise that SpaceX is, yet again, up to something new. Though the company has had its misfortunes in the past, namely the explosion of Starship briefly after it landed safely, Elon Musk is determined to ever improve its rockets and eventually meet his goal of sending humans to Mars. The company's latest project has been completing a prototype of the largest rocket booster ever built, testing it at the launch pad. This is the first true super heavy booster prototype for Starship, a fully reusable, two-stage to orbit super heavy lift launch vehicle which eventually aims to carry passengers perhaps to the moon and even Mars. Unsurprisingly, the rocket booster prototype is extraordinarily heavy. It's expected to weigh six times more than a fully fueled Falcon 9. Eventually, the rocket will have 32 Raptor engines attached, more than any other rocket, and it will have over twice the thrust of NASA's Saturn V moon rocket, which remains the most powerful rocket successfully flown yet. After Booster 3, the largest rocket booster so far was built and very hard to build according to Musk. It will undergo a cryogenic proof test to replace gaseous nitrogen with a supercooled liquid, simulating the thermal and mechanical stress of the cold liquid oxygen and methane propellant. Basically, the Super Heavy has to be tested to make sure it is structurally sound and its tanks are pressurized to nominal flight pressures. So, what exactly is Starship? In short, it's a fully reusable transport system that can carry up to 100 passengers to Mars. It's an integral step in Musk and SpaceX's founding goal of making human civilization multi-planet. In part, this is to avoid the possibility of extinction or devastation by threats such as climate change or an asteroid collision, which have become more and more of a reality in recent decades. Essentially, this would spread our eggs in many baskets. Crucially, it being reusable means that Starship can take multiple trips, carrying hundreds of individuals to the Red Planet. Rather than having its principal hardware elements discarded in the sea or burned up in space, they are recovered and can be reused after some refurbishment. This reduces the cost of the project, which is already astronomical and increases efficiency. The spacecraft itself, Starship, requires the previously mentioned Super Heavy rocket to launch. In addition to Starship, SpaceX is also rolling out 12,000 Starlink satellites to provide broadband internet service across the world and to combat space junk in lower orbits. Already, it has launched approximately 1,737 satellites. This time around, SpaceX is planning on ensuring that the satellites hover at a lower altitude, enabling them to provide faster broadband service with lower latency. Latency. However, this was objected to by numerous competing firms such as Viasat, OneWeb and Amazon, arguing that it could interfere with other satellite networks and increase the risk of colliding with orbital spacecraft or debris. Eventually, the Federal Communications Commission sided with SpaceX, believing that the Starlink constellation could have a beneficial impact on reducing orbital debris while not causing major interference issues, and the request to deploy the satellites was approved. In a tweet, Musk added the atmosphere automatically clears the lower altitude within a few years, so space junk cannot accumulate, citing that as one of the key reasons for moving Starlink from a roughly 1,100 km orbit to a 5,500 km one. Essentially, at lower altitudes, satellites that fail will no longer linger in space and become space junk, as atmospheric drag will quickly pull them back toward the Earth's atmosphere, where they'll burn up upon re-entry. How does Starlink relate back to Starship? Well, SpaceX has also requested the FCC to let Starship communicate with Starlink during its first orbital launch attempt. Opening up to a variety of exciting possibilities. The point is for Starlink to provide unprecedented volumes of telemetry and enable communications during atmospheric re-entry when ionized plasma around the spacecraft inhibits conventional telemetry frequencies. Starlink has the capability to greatly improve the efficiency and safety of space missions. In previous tests, Starlink performed well, possibly even beyond expectations. So SpaceX is focused on expanding Starlink's use in communications and increasing tests on aircraft ships and road vehicles. For rockets to improve, they will likely undergo failure, and it is of the utmost importance to collect accurate, reliable data on what went wrong. That's where Starlink comes into play. Starlink could help expand the bandwidth of telemetry and data collection from a few megabits per second to hundreds of megabits per second, making the data high resolution. This can drastically improve the efficiency of launching rockets. What's more, if SpaceX can break through the plasma barrier surrounding spacecraft during re-entry into the orbit, the company can access unprecedented data in order to perfect orbital re-entry, descent and landing. As early as August 2021 could we see the first launch of Starship and its corresponding re-entry attempt. And that is still not all. In June, SpaceX launched 88 satellites from Florida atop of the Falcon 9 rocket, sending nearly 900 this year, a component of the SmallSat rideshare program's Transporter 2 mission. In the initial launch, SpaceX had to postpone liftoff as a private helicopter 
had entered airspace that was supposed to be closed off and heavily regulated, leading Musk to criticize the Federal Aviation Administration for its broken regulations. The spacecraft entered polar orbit and returned to land perfectly, capping the eighth successful launch and landing of the Falcon 9 booster in the past year. 36 of the satellites were mounted on a payload adapter built by Spaceflight. Five of the satellites are supposed to test laser communications between them in space as well as data processing. SpaceX, again, is determined to communicate with ships and weapon systems effectively. Another cluster of satellites will gather radio frequency data and maritime radio frequency transmissions. Other satellites are meant to provide the government optical services from space. This year has seen an unprecedented number of launches and not only from SpaceX, but the world. The 900 launches are almost double what the world launched in any year before 2020. Most of these satellites are meant for the Starlink constellation, which is continually being added to. Crucially, the rocket booster in question has been reused. This points to the potential of SpaceX in using reusable launch vehicles to lower costs and increase the frequency of launching spacecraft, which has been an obstacle they've had to overcome. The positive effects of this down the line are causing billions to pour in through venture funding and investment, making SpaceX one of the most valuable private companies in the world. Is SpaceX the next big space infrastructure company in investors' eyes? If orchestrated correctly, the Starlink network has the potential to revolutionize internet speeds and data collection, and if it beats their competitors in Amazon's Cooper and OneWeb, allows SpaceX to sell it to companies such as Planet, Spire, and Hawkeye. Speaking of the Raptor rocket engine, SpaceX is also looking to improve it. Musk tweeted that the company wants to build an engine called Raptor 2, which would be even more powerful than the current Raptor engine. They would like to increase the base thrust of the engine to around 230 tons or approximately 500 million pounds, while increasing the booster engine count to 32 or 33, totaling about 7,600 tons of thrust for the engine. Raptor 2 could enhance our chances of getting passengers to Mars, improving acceleration off the launch and reducing gravity losses in the first few minutes, thereby increasing the overall efficiency of the engine. Beyond sending Starship to Mars, which is the long-term goal, Musk has also suggested that the spacecraft could be turned into a new giant telescope with a higher resolution than the Hubble, which is now facing glitches due to its age. As of now, many factors are still uncertain, such as whether Starship will even be able to launch successfully and re-enter orbit, much less stay in space as a stable platform, like NASA's Hubble. The indicators are looking good, with Booster 3 even recently weathering a thunderstorm with lightning. Aside from this, the Starship can enable possibilities such as capturing and repairing satellites in orbit. The sheer size of the telescope is larger than the Hubble, but still smaller than the Herschel Space Observatory or the James Webb Space Telescope, but it can send telescopes to the latter if SpaceX is inclined to. In more miscellaneous news, the SpaceX Dragon is planning to undock from the International Space Station on the 8th, forced to postpone due to the tropical storm Elsa. Having been launched on June 3 from Kennedy Space Center, the Dragon arrived at the ISS 16 hours after, delivering over 7,300 pounds of supplies for the crew members there. It will conversely bring findings from many scientific investigations conducted there back to Earth, including findings on lyophilization 2, which relates to freeze-drying processes, molecular muscle experiment 2, which tests drugs to see if they can improve health in space, and oral biofilms in space, which examines how gravity affects the composition of oral bacteria. With all this to say, we sure do have a lot to look forward to in the coming months as SpaceX continues to push the world's space industry forward. Let me know what your thoughts are on all this in the comments section down below. I'm curious to know. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time.